Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming in a new Baldur's Gate video. Now I originally made a helpful video about Act 1 and all the important things not to miss there, but now it's time for Act 2. There's a ton of important things, interactions and details that you can easily miss, it might even screw you. Like for example, why is Halcyn such an easy to miss companion? Many powerful items like the flawed Helldusk armor. That and more we're going to cover in this video in as close to a spoiler free way. So let's start with our first things not to miss. We begin here with the entrance to the Mountain Pass region. There's actually a few ways to reach this place, but obviously the easiest is to the west of Walkeen's Rest. Basically, when you first interact with this place, it gives you a warning. Hey, are you sure you want to go there? You need to be high enough level. It's going to push the story forward and all that type of warning. Now, because of that warning, a lot of people, myself included, and I've seen it a lot on Twitter, have actually been avoiding the Mountain Pass. This entire region with some really important events, some incredible loot, all because they think this means you're entering act two which in reality it isn't it's more like it's part of act one so i would actually strongly suggest you come to the mountain pass region at our first waypoint you have the crags and coming down and around you have a camp here you can meet lady esther who will give you a quest to actually go steal a gith egg and return it to her and she's also a vendor this all takes place at the rosmond monastery the next waypoint where major story events occur not only that but you can get this legendary weapon a one-handed mace with an incredible unique attack sunbeam we have a whole guide on how to get this because there's a few puzzles and things involved, but also here is the major stuff to do with the Gith and story with Lazel, of course. You can also come from the crags heading west and coming downhill to these steps and enter the Cursed Lands anyway. So there's some really important stuff here. Just be aware you can go do it. And in fact, I would implore you do it before truly getting into the Shadow Cursed Lands because the story events here are very relevant to that. Once you've made it to the Cursed Lands region though, probably via the Grimforge elevator, you'll need to make your way here to the Last Light Inn which is actually pretty close to where you'll enter. Here there is not one, but two vendors with some incredible items you want to consider. First, we have the Quartermaster, who has the Incandescent Staff. This could be a great staff for a spellcaster. It also comes with Firebolt when equipped and level 3 Fireball. It's a versatile weapon, which means with someone like Gale, you could even equip a shield to get some extra AC on a spellcaster. We can't see it in the Quartermaster's sale because I've already bought it, but she also sells this, the Shield of Devotion. Yes, a very rare shield, which is a very very important thing to be able to buy for your team, giving you one level one spell slot, shield bash, and the devotion aid spell, which is incredible. Heal yourself and then give yourself 10 temporary hit points on top of that. That's incredible. On top of that, we also have another vendor, Damon, on the north side, a blacksmith. As you can see when we trade with him, we can buy the Sword of Life Stealing, a short sword that on critical hit deals extra necrotic damage and will even gain 10 temporary hit points as long as it's not a construct or an undead. Pretty incredible for someone like Asterion or in general for the lifesteal. Now we've got those items for our party, it's time to deal with the pesky blight that really makes everything annoying when exploring this region. Now, there is indeed a way to get that working moon lantern, but the downside is you need to hold it. Why do that when you can get a full party buff that doesn't require anything taking up any of your hands? Basically, when you originally come to the Last Light Inn and speak with the leaders, you'll meet with some harpers who are planning an ambush. That ambush takes place here, southwest of the Shadowed Battlefield waypoint. Whatever way you deal with the ambush, the result will be a Moon Lantern. But if you actually choose to interact with it instead of just carrying on, you'll find out there's a pixie trapped in there. If you can convince it to help you and free it, it'll give you a special bell. This is the filigreed Feywild Bell, and you can use it to essentially beg with the pixie for her help, at which point she will then give you and your entire party the pixie's blessing, which completely mitigates the shadow curse, which is incredible and you can just keep doing this. So it is well worth doing before you really start to explore this region at all. Next, what about an incredible set of armor? The Flawed Hell Dusk set. A helmet, a chest, and even gloves. These are all rare pieces and with some very powerful effects. Letting us deal extra fire damage and necrotic damage. When we take a hit, we might set the enemy on fire or constitution saving throws and magical durability. This might even lead to the full legendary non-flawed hell dusk armor in act three. So if that is the case, it's worth actually securing these. You'll need to come to Damon again on the north side and interact with him. He'll need up to three infernal iron to craft you that armor. 
Now you can find that iron all over the world and you might already have three or at least a few but I'll show you where you can get three in Act 1 because it's really easy. Starting in the Blighted Village in the shabby wooden doors leading to the underground blacksmith cellar. Here you can just climb a ladder and in this chest up top which is locked originally is your first iron for you to collect. Next up we have the goblin camp and behind its throne room of Draw, who is dead down there is a secret room with a load of treasure just literally a pile of crates that has loads of gold in it originally. In this is is the next metal but to get it you're going to need the key which drops from drow himself you'll have to come to this camp to save halson so chances are you've already done this and have the key maybe you've even looted this and have the metal already for our third and last metal then we're still here in act one at wild king's rest and if you actually come northwest there's this room that has a hatch that leads down into a secret area you'll need to reveal the entrance behind the boxes and move them out of the way and do watch out for the explosive barrel ambush that's set up for you heading down you'll need to find a wardrobe to reveal the hidden staircase that leads to the true hide out, which as you can see is this kind of tunnels and cave system. Within here is a band of what would be fairly named black market traders who don't want any attention and you can work through this cave through force or conversation but ultimately you're going to want to come to the north side to this room on the left. Inside this room are two trapped chests which you will need to disarm and the right chest has the last iron we're after. Of course there are other places you can find this iron but these are three easy ones to get. Return to Gammon, have him craft the armor pieces and you'll have them. Awesome. Awesome. Next up in Act 2 that you don't want to miss is our main man Halson here, who yes, will actually join the party in true. You just need to do a little quest line with him, which is surprisingly easy to miss. We'll need to head to the Last Light Inn and head to the North Room on the ground floor, which is actually the Infirmary, where you will meet Art Culligan, who's in a sort of shadow fell coma. After you interact with him and learn about this, go back to camp and talk with Halson. He'll be interested to meet Art and leaves the camp to go to the Last Light Inn, where you can follow him and talk to him there. Basically, you want to agree to to bring back Thaniel. To do that, you're going to need to find a battered loot which will help Art wake. As it should be marked on your map, you'll need to come southwest to the House of Healing. There's a convenient waypoint right next to it, the Grand Mausoleum, if you've got that already. You'll need to get the loot from a doctor named Malthus Thorn. The safest way to enter is via the rooftop. There's an open window that leads across the library roof to a ladder down, leading then to the surgery room. Here you can win the encounter through combat or clever conversation, which is cool, and ultimately you want to take the loot from Malthus. Us. Head back to the last light in with the loot in hand and use it to wake up art. It doesn't matter whether you're a bard or know how to use it or not, it'll just give the option in conversation. Now be warned, the next step is important, and if you fail it, Halson will actually die, so hard save here. Agree to help Halson with the portal, and then go help him and defend him while waves of enemies attack the portal. This is pretty crazy, it's a lot of enemies. My advice here is to prepare a lot of radiance damage, AoE damage of any kind, knockbacks which can send them into the water, and holy water you can throw if you have any. I would recommend that you focus on AoE and clearing up groups, especially the low health ones before they can become pesky, and try to focus the rangers who are just going to attack the portal from far. But make sure you have at least one person defending the portal physically at all times because more adds spawn and they might surprise you. Either way, after defeating all the enemies, you will be able to talk to Halson again and then return to the camp to speak with him once more. At that point, he'll actually agree to join you for the party permanently. However, there's a bit more to this story. Through the talk with Halson at that point, he'll also talk about the location of a shadow Thaniel, like another half of him. It'll be marked on your map, but it's southwest of the inn at the shadowed battlefield at a house on the hill. You'll need to convince Oliver, who is the shadow version's name, to come back with you. Now potentially that means playing with him and succeeding, or ultimately fight the scenario he presents. When done, return to the camp with Halsin, and that'll end that story. And again, Halsin will offer to join your party in true. Nice to finally have this druid on the team though. After all that, let's talk details of this region and what there is to really explore. For example, across the water from the inn, you have this big city with four main buildings, the House of Healing, the Mason's Guild, the Toll House, and the Waning Moon. Each one has its own interesting details, such as the House of Healing with the storyline we just did, but each of them has something going on worth exploring. So explore it to your heart's content, but I'll highlight a few things that are worth seeing. Let's first start with the Toll House, which has a very interesting boss on the top floor. This accursed keeper of coins, you'll find her on the top floor of the Toll House, demanding gold while being made of it herself. If you agree to not only give her a little bit, 
but all of your gold she'll let you pass. Meaning she'll give you this item, a signed trade visa, which is very rare, promising safe passage to Baldur's Gate. Honestly, I'm not sure what this does yet, but I figure it'll come in handy at some point in the future. Besides, you can then just fight her, which is, by the way, a good 600 health to get through, very dangerous, but she does path nicely up to a high ledge where you can push her straight off, dealing over 500 damage in one move. After you defeat her, you can loot her and you get all of your gold back, so there's no problem at all to do that. You'll also get the key to her private office, which has some extra goodies, and a floor to break, which reveals another hidden room with some more loot. Another detail here in town that I don't want you to miss is if you head from the center to the west, you'll find the road to Baldur's Gate. And this bridge right here has an ambush of Gith. They're hunting the artifact, especially after the events in the Mountain Pass. If you defeat this ambush, you not only get some useful items, but later when long resting, you'll be visited by an important Gith character. Now, without spoiling anything, if you agree to that encounter, you'll get this psionic detector, which basically lets you know when a Gith ambush is going to occur near you. Otherwise, you just don't see them portal in and it just happens. This way you can actually prepare for that scenario, whether you're going to deal with the ambush or avoid it. Lastly for the town, there's actually another storyline you can do. If you head from the Last Light Inn and head straight east to this specific spot right here uphill, there's this very interesting NPC called He Who Was, who wants you to bring a murderer to justice. At least that's what he says. In reality, the person is dead and he just wants to torment them. The quest will bring you to the Waning Moon though, which is on the southwest side of the actual town. It's basically a big pub or bar. And you need to go find an item there. Heading to the bar, you can make it through this conversation with this big looking enemy without a fight. If your roles are very good and ideally you have good charisma. There's also some interesting items to find in here too, of course. But when you get the item, you can return back to he who was, ending the quest line and ending it how you want. But a relatively positive ending results in the Raven Gloves. These gloves let you summon his Raven. Now Ravens as a summon are rated very high. Despite their lower stats, the fact they can fly is useful, but I think it's mainly for their ability to rend vision, which can blind enemies, which then gives your whole party advantage on that enemy in combat. So very good. Then the last thing is south of the Moonrise Tower waypoint is the Moonrise Towers themselves. Here, you can actually head in by being peaceful and using conversation because of course they'll think you're a true soul. Then you can casually speak with most and importantly, access the two vendors near the entrance. One provides a purple halberd, which looks incredible, while the other has a purple chest piece for sale from medium armor. Other than that, of course, you wanna do as much of this place as possible peacefully, making the most of it before then completing Shah's temple and progressing the main story. Speaking of which, to the north, above the Grand Mausoleum, you will find Shah's Temple. I have a full guide to that entire gauntlet and all the puzzles within. It's tied to two legendary spears you unlock in that story on the channel right now, so you can go check that out. But I would recommend you do the Shah Temple before you actually complete or fully go for the Moonrise Towers, just because of what happens there. But there you have it. 10, or to be honest, more than 10, important things not to miss in Act 2. I hope this was useful to you, and if there's anything else you think people shouldn't miss that I didn't talk about, maybe drop it in the comments. For now, though, I've been Hollow, you've been you. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is, uh, goodbye.